We've all seen it. Crazy, insane stunts designed to get your attention. And then you have no clue what happens next because it doesn't make any sense to you. So we're talking about every KT today, 308. Pitfalls of extravagant marketing. So this applies directly to anyone who wears a kilt as part of their business routine. Um, extravagant marketing. So we've all, or well, most of us I'm sure, remember the pu Puppy Monkey Baby video. Do you remember what it was about? No clue. Extravagant, over-the-top marketing. Gets your attention. It's meant to astound you or impress you or shock you or something along those lines. But if it's not done well, you're never going to know what they're talking about. Same thing goes with wearing a kilt. If you wear your kilt as part of marketing your business or your brand or, or who you are, um, you can't have that be the focus. You know, I wear this, not maybe not this one, but I wear a kilt all the time as part of my brand. But it's not the focus. It might be the icebreaker. It might be that thing that gets somebody interested, but that's not what I talk about all the time. You know, with the puppy monkey baby, with all those other things, Everyone remembers what that thing is, you know, and when it comes to wearing a kilt as a function of your business, sure, they're going to remember you because oh, you're the you're the one wearing the kilt. But hopefully, all the discussions that you have with these people, it's not about your kilt. It's about how you can help them solve a problem. The kilt is just something that, you know, differentiates you from everyone else who does the same thing. Makes you stand out. Makes you be more than just some random person in a crowd. Very important to be able to do that, but you can't focus on that. If someone comes up, and this comes from personal experience, say you're at a mixer or a networking event or something like that, and someone comes up and they start asking about your kilt. You give a very short, tiny little example or explanation or whatever of why you're wearing the kilt. After that, you talk about how you can help them by asking what it is that they do, why they're there, and what kind of troubles they're having. What pain, th what pain are they having as a business owner or someone with a company? And try to tailor your responses to fixing that issue. Do not, under any circumstance, spend the entire time talking about your kilt, your ancestors 37 generations ago who were in Scotland for a moment because the boat went through. Do not focus on that because you're completely wasting your time and you are completely wasting an opportunity to get a client, make a sale, impress upon someone with your actual skills, not just your garment. So extravagant marketing, it is designed to get someone's attention. But the only way you're going to actually get business from that is if you do not focus on it. Do not focus at all on, sorry, for those of you who don't know, this is Facebook Live. I'm reading some of the comments from the shenaniganizers who are posting some interesting stuff. Uh, go over to the Facebook page, uh, KT the Kilt Man, if you want to go read about it. So focus on the client what you can do to help them, and how you can make their lives easier. So somebody give me a volume of Kiltology, and I'll give you today's Kiltology. So like, while, and while we're waiting for that, remember, focus on the client. Your kilt, or whatever extravagant, mind-blowingly amazing, epic marketing stunt you have pulled, while it gets attention, if you don't use that attention and directly convert from, not convert, yeah, di directly divert their attention from your marketing effort to how you can solve their a client's problem, you're going to lose them. So Mike kicks in with volume two. It's on Amazon. Go buy it. Kiltology. So let's see. Blah, blah, blah. I actually have read all of those already multiple times. Those two. So, extravagant marketing. So, this actually applies. 
Kiltology number 417. How to cause an internet panic. Now, mind you, this was written... Oh, 2012-ish. So, it wasn't as crazy. It, it, this wasn't as everyday as, as it is now. So, here's a surefire way to cause a social media panic. One, take a picture of yourself wearing a kilt doing absolutely nothing special. Two, post a picture on any major social networking sites. Three, make sure at least one female sees the picture. Four, let simmer. Now, there is a caveat. Three should actually read, let anybody see the picture. Doesn't matter. For added effect, add a second action pose. This is sure to cause all sorts of hell. That actually happened. Posted some random silly stuff, and then posted more random, more silly, more crazy stuff. Yes, Mike, it is time for volume three. I know I gotta get working on that. So with that, <coughs> how does that apply? Direct, it, very simply, extravagant marketing. Do crazy stuff, cause a stir, but you must, absolutely must be able to find a way to convert that discussion from the crazy marketing thing you did to how your company brand efforts, skills, whatever, can solve a client's problem and make you money. If you can't do that thing, then the extravagant marketing is a waste of time. With that, I'll let you go. Uh, tomorrow, Friday, I think, maybe. All kinds of good stuff going on. And I hope everybody has an awesome day. Have some shenanigans. Yes, fountains, Mike, that's right. And I will see you tomorrow. Be strong. Put a kilt on.